Oh, here we go. We'll go for uh, this guy right here. This is Jay from Iowa who wants to talk about uh, why is it so important for an atheist to be telling people that God isn't real. Jay, how are you? Pretty good. How about you? I'm fantastic, man. So th that's the question that I've got here on the screen. It says, you know, why is it so important for an atheist to be telling people that God isn't real? Is that a fair summary of what you were calling about? Or do you want to elaborate a little bit more on it? Yeah, no, well, I mean, yeah, that was the general question. Okay, cool. Um, I think, like, a, a part of it is, is you know, some of the stuff that, that we just talked about is that this is something that we want to uh, make more common and, and, and just kind of remove stigma from. Uh, it shouldn't have to be a difficult, painful thing for an atheist to sort of, you know, come out to their family. Um, uh, so just a, a big part of, of what we do here is just exposure and letting people know that they're not alone and that it's okay and that we can talk. Also, you know, if you talk to every individual atheist, they're probably going to give you a different answer every time. But if you ask me in particular why I do shows like this, uh, it's because I also am what's called an anti-theist. So I think that the, uh, the gods on offer, the idea of a god at all, especially the Christian god, which is, you know, well, I grew up in Oklahoma, so that's what's around me all the time. Um, that sounds horrible. It's, it sounds really unpleasant and really awful. And I think, as I said in the last call, when you say things like Jesus loves you and things like that, these things I see on billboards all around me, I think those are really hateful, mean statements. So uh, I'm not going door to door, knocking and, and telling people God isn't real. I'm not building a church. I don't have a televangelism thing. We have a call-in show on, on the YouTubes right. that people can call if they want to. Um, but like, it's, so it's, it's, it's not important for me to go and like tell everybody and like shake them by the collar and say God isn't real, but I am very, very happy to spread the message where I can and to try to help people understand to, to, you know, what we don't believe in and why we don't believe it. Okay, well, I have a question um, on what you said. Yeah. Uh, you said something about something being hateful, that uh, Jesus loves you is hateful? Yeah, absolutely. How so? Uh, so, uh, basically, I'm, I, I don't want to give you, I want to talk over it too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, when this is perfect, like about what we were just talking with these other, the other person is that, you know, when a Christian person says that God loves you, Jesus loves you, whatever things like this, they almost certainly hear that as a very kind, inclusive, generous, loving thing to tell you that you're welcomed and you're, you're, you're loved and how wonderful. But, you know, I'm hearing this from the outside looking in. I'm looking at the whole philosophy, the whole, whole you know, the whole shebang. It's not just about love. The whole dogma here is that we are inherently sinful people, that we uh, cannot possibly be good. We are irredeemably just sinful, wicked, evil, broken, diseased, whatever. And the only way for us to get into heaven, to live with you know, paradise and all those things, is by being forgiven, by, by, by being Christian, by believing, by confessing, by you know, all these things. And otherwise, without that, we go to hell, an eternity of, par uh, of torture, of, of conscious anguish and pain in a lake of fire. And this is heaped upon the, the also the assumption that God, the ruler of the universe that controls everything, nothing happens without his, his, his okay. Um, and it is always a his, isn't that fun? Um, that this God uh, designed the universe this way on purpose and that he is all just, that what he does is the right thing to do all the time. And so what you're telling me when you, when you tell me that Jesus loves me, you're saying half of it. You're not saying Jesus loves you, period. You're saying Jesus loves you so much that if you don't love him back, he is going to torture you in hell for all eternity because you are so disgusting and evil and wicked and broken that that is the only good thing to have that could possibly happen to you. It would be morally right if you were tortured forever, but he loves you, and so it doesn't Jesus have to Jesus loves be. you or else. Exactly. So it's a threat. It's a twisted mockery of love. Um, it's an insult. It's a, it's a really, really mean and uh, you know, hurtful thing to say to somebody, especially if they don't believe. Well, I guess that uh, we all have our crazy beliefs, atheists and theists. I mean, you guys have the woke stuff, and we have Jesus. What's the difference? What's, what's, I mean, we can debate like where those beliefs come from and what the value of them are. I mean, in a lot of ways, that's what Forrest and I are here to do. Yeah. But it's worth acknowledging that, yes, okay, you have your beliefs. These other people, these atheists, they keep trying to like push this narrative of God is dead or never existed on you. You know, sure, we have different values and different beliefs. But what you're maybe not recognizing here is something we talked about with the last caller, which
which is just that the Christian culture is so prevalent and so everywhere that it feels oftentimes like Christians don't recognize how they're received by the rest of the world. You know, atheists are in this sort of weird position where for, you know, a lot of good reasons, atheism doesn't like being lumped in as like another religion. You go to the bookstore and you find, you know, Dawkins and Hitchens and like the religious section feels a little strange. But on the outside, you also have to recognize that this is a completely different belief system with a different set of values. And a lot of that stuff that you may take for granted as normal, everyday, Jesus loves you kind of stuff really doesn't ring that way. Well, I find, uh, like, your stuff more strange or repulsive, I could say. Sure, but we're not, quote, like, playing our stuff at every grocery store during the holiday season or forcing cashiers to acknowledge our stuff. We can, again, debate, like, the quality and value of our different stuff, but I guess I'm just asking you to empathize for a moment with the idea that you are not part of the dominant culture and what that must feel like. I've, I've never had a flyer saying God isn't real and you should enjoy your life for what it is left under my windshield wiper at yeah. Walmart. I have had flyers saying you deserve to go to hell. Here's why. Here's a poorly yeah. drawn comic of it. Yeah, exactly. I've had that several times. So, like, you see how it's kind of different. Uh, what's normal here, you know? Well, I mean, I lived in Portland and I had the abortion flyers in my car all the time. Pro right. But like you have to understand, like this is the second time you've t- you talked about you said the word woke, which I don't know. That's a whole other rabbit hole. But like and I talking about abortion. You realize atheism is just simply atheism is just the simple one position that we don't believe in a God. There are plenty of atheists that are like conservative Christian or conservative Republicans. I almost said conservative Christians. That'd be weird. Uh-huh. But like, there are plenty of atheists that are conservative Republicans. There are plenty of atheists that are as far left as you can possibly be, and everywhere in between. Atheism is just saying that we don't believe in a god. So like, yeah, I'm I am ex- to call me left leaning would be like calling the Civil War a disagreement. I am very very left, but like that has nothing to do with my atheism, and I'm certainly not you know pushing an agenda or anything by being here saying that I have no reason to believe in your god. All you guys push an agenda. Who, I mean, all, sure. All we're, yeah, we're here as part of a 501c3 educational organization. So we're here to teach people things, to educate people on things. Like we have an agenda. It's about separating church from state. It's, mm-hmm. it's about all of these important things. So, yeah, you, that's not like a get out of the conversation free card to just say <laughs> someone's pushing an agenda. You can't label every flyer for every idea that you don't like as being atheism and an affront on my religion. Mm-hmm. Your, your religion isn't being confronted. Some of your ideas might be challenged, okay. but that's what a flyer is for, right. right? It's to give you information about a thing. Yep. Okay, okay. Um, our general, our atheists, left-leaning and then if they're left-leaning woke i've so i'm that. i'm sorry i'm I, not I, even I, touching that woke but i have a hundred dude, feet away I, i'm dying to know like what it actually is but like I, the <laughs> thing is there are well, trends in this area that you can track statistically generally speaking uh uh atheists tend like as as people increase in in education they tend towards atheism, uh, but that isn't always true depending on the field. Like, it depends on if you're in the sciences or if you're in philosophy or whatever like that. So it's not fair to say atheists tend to be more educated. That's kind of bullshit. Um, Also, atheism, uh, uh, atheists do tend to be left-leaning, but again, that kind of depends on what you're going with and what you're defining it as. What we call the left here in America is, like, just right of center for the rest of the world. So, like, it, it, it really depends. The, on, like I said a minute ago, the only thing you can say about atheists that's uniformly true is that they don't believe in a god. And generally, that they're woke, where you believe that men are women and women are men. I I, I don't believe that, and that's not a good like generalization of. I'm assuming you're talking about trans people. That's a crappy, like weird way to describe what that is. Super that, lazy punching bag. I like I don't mean to be confrontational about is. it, but please don't do that. Yeah, that's. <laughs> I, I hope you know just how absurd that is. That would be like me saying that you as a Christian believe in a a, a Jewish zombie that'll burn my soul. Like that's kind of a silly thing to say, right? So like. I'm not, I, I have yet to give you a straw man argument of your position. Please don't, uh, you know, straw man an entire group of people. You guys believe. 
It's very not, and we're sitting here telling you it's not. So either you think you know what's going on inside our minds better than we do, or you're wrong. Well, I, past shows, I've seen your past shows and where you describe you're a biologist that denies biology. I am not. I am a biologist that follows the evidence. Yes. So are you talking about the difference between sex and gender? Yes. No, I, yeah, I mean, however you want to call it. Yeah, sex and gender are different things. The, see, that's, that's the thing. One of them's a biological construct, call, one's a social construct. Yeah, I mean, when you that's call him just, a biologist who oh, refutes oh. biology, you have to stop and ask yourself, well, what is my understanding of biology and where does it come from? Right? Like when we say sex and gender well, are different things, that's like introductory conversation to a million different fields. It's important that you understand these fields before you come in and try and say, well, this is this and that is that. I'm not saying you can just listen to somebody because they have a degree, but maybe you should at least listen, you know, hear it out a little bit, follow the evidence, because as Forrest is pointing out, the evidence clearly leans in that direction. Mm -hmm. uh, before we wrap up, did, did you have anything else that you can maybe put a bow on it for us? Because it feels like we're getting into some name-calling-ish kind of territory. No, I'll ask a simple question, a, a simple yes or no question. Uh -huh. I mean, that's all it is. Um, can a biological male impregnate a, a male that identifies as a woman? If is, not, why not? I is the only thing that matters about gender and sex, you know, pr uh, reproduction? I mean, I'm just still hung up on the term biological male. We yeah, know that a that's a squishy, words, messy, bullshit concept to begin with. You don't know what a biological male is? No, of no and I'm going to express that a... perhaps you don't either, <laughs> which is why I would really encourage you to go to the evidence. Like, you're, you're talking to folks who have, you know, kind of particularly dug into this sort of thing, and you don't have to believe what I believe or agree with what I agree with, but, like, maybe read some of the books that I'm reading, right? Or at least some books on some of these concepts. This is why I'm questioning you guys. This is ex because I've seen the videos and then I've seen the the reviews that uh, the the papers that you guys want me to look at, but it still doesn't convince me. So this is why I'm calling you. I mean, we all have our beliefs. That's fine. You guys don't respect what I believe. I'm I'm not talking about beliefs. I'm yeah. talking about understanding. That's the thing. I I I, I don't <laughs> care if you're convinced or not. That's the scientific consensus. Like that's the thing. Is like you, you can look at. Any introductory anthropology textbook, any introductory genetics textbook, you can look at like the the freaking dictionary. <laughs> like you can, I mean, you can psychology one hundred and one is going to have a chapter psychology on gender versus it. sexuality. The World Health Organization, the American Medical Association have like detailed publications about it. I don't care if you're convinced or not. The leading science in the world points in this direction. So like. That's what we're going to go with. That's my, as a biologist, my job is to study and understand biology. If you don't like where biology points, it doesn't matter to me. I have plenty of people who call in and say evolution isn't real. It doesn't matter to me because as a biologist, I study it and I understand it. Like that's the end of the conversation for me. It's, it, it, it doesn't matter. Do you know what a male is in a species? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I do. It, we're again, we're back to the very first chapter, and I, I'm not trying to disagree with you. I'm trying to maybe explain to you or, or just urge you to find some understanding here. Here's where here. your woke stuff comes into place. Here's where your woke stuff comes into place. So you know the biology of how things work, but then you deny biology when it comes to all this gender stuff. Did you hear what I just said a minute ago about how gender and sex are different things? They're different things. So, so why do you categorize them as the same thing? I didn't. I never have. You guys do. Um, biological males competing with females. You guys say that. I'm, I'm glad that you think that sports are so important that you're willing to deny people like human rights and dignity, but I do not. So, like, if we have a system that kind of sucks, then maybe we should just change the system, right, and not treat people like trash. Did you not, did, did you not see the female that just got beat in the volleyball game by a male, how he spiked the ball and just beat the shit out of her? Yeah, well, I'm going to just... I'm actually not caught up on the particulars of competitive volleyball. Yeah, and I would not... wonder why the hell you are if it wasn't to, <laughs> quote, push an agenda. I like, also am curious to know, like, what you've thought about trans being in, uh, trans people being in the, in the sports for the past 20 years that trans people have been allowed in the Olympics. And now all of a sudden you can point to one instance in which a trans person won a thing, and now you're real mad. <laughs> many, many, many. It's not one. I mean, you can be deceptive. It's not one, it's many. 
Yeah, yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure. I'm sure that that's. Oh man. So there's <laughs> the law I'm, of big numbers. I, yeah, we're, we're, yeah, we're pretty far afield here. Uh, I guess just to say, I I can hear the the urgency behind some of your positions. I I really want to take them seriously. And there are good natured conversations to be had about what is what and how do we draw these lines. How do we understand these very complex ideas? I'm just going to very kindly urge you once again not to believe these ideas, but to work towards understanding them. Because mm-hmm. if you can understand it and tell me it's bullshit, you'll be able to tell me why it's bullshit without gra- grabbing like random news headlines and calling everybody woke. So th- I guess that's the, the kind of final word for me. I hope that you'll think through some of this stuff, put your thoughts together, maybe give us another try. Yeah. Oh my God! You guys just don't like truth. It's, it's <laughs> as soon as you bring me some, I will let you know how I feel about it. Absolutely, man. Well, you have a fun day. You sound like you're a delightful person. I'm going to move on to the next call, uh, but thank you so much, Jay.